everybody this is rose with another cup and another drop today i'm going to just actually feature a primary shoe that i came here for but there i have a host of other shoes i haven't done a video in a month and i just really didn't want to do a video so you know in weeks past so i just decided to compile all the shoes that i've i have purchased minus a couple and just do a video just like a haul video but my main focus or the primary shoe that I really want to talk about is the new Giannis Freak One. A lot of people say they don't like this shoe. They they just they don't like that this is the first shoe that he's come out with. But the, what you all gotta realize is that this is his first. It only goes up from here. So chill out on that. I think you'll like the shoe anyway if you really get it in hand and really honestly try it on. But I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna drop that that shoe somewhere throughout this video, but let's just go ahead and get started with some of the shoes that I picked up on, and most of them are primarily deals. Um, and one I just wanted because I just wanted it. Um, let's start with this one. A lot of people don't talk about this shoe. A lot of people don't know about this shoe. This is Spencer Dinwiddie's shoe, and this is um, Kairos Spencer Dinwiddie. Um, and he calls this perception. So we're just going to get into this real quick. I'm, I'm not going to, you know, delay this any further. I just want y'all to know that a lot of people are sleeping on this shoe, but this shoe takes a lot of inspiration, a lot of inspiration from a, a lot of other shoes out there. Um, what I like mainly about this shoe is the feel is the actual feel when you put it on. Honestly, this strap is not necessary because the lockdown of the shoe on its own is what is what um, I like about the shoe. The lockdown is actually incredible. We'll just go ahead and just look at it real quick. I just feel like a lot of people slept on this shoe. And I actually, the reason why I purchased it, I wasn't going to pay $150 for it. I got like, oh, it's hot here. I got like a deal on it here. So I decided to go ahead and just cop it. I think I paid like $110 for it or maybe $112. Not, not exactly sure. But anyway, let's move along. Let's put this back in and pick up another shoe that I got. And I'm not going to do an individual video on, on this next shoe only because everybody and their mama on YouTube did that. So I figure I'd just go ahead and feature it real quick because I wanted it. And actually, I paid a little over retail. I ain't paid no $2,000, $3,000 like they featured on StockX, which I think is absolutely out of this world. My apologies, y'all. It's hot in here. I'm in the, the room that doesn't get a lot of air. <laughs> so, anyway, <laughs> let's get into this next shoe. I'm really, really impressed by it. You know from the box what it is, what it is. Color of the box. Call out a tissue paper. My bad. <laughs> y'all, y'all, I'm out of touch with this. But anyway, what y'all get? I already put the pink laces in. But y'all know these Travis Scotts. I just had to have them. Just had to have them. Just had to have them. Legit, legit. All right, moving along. And again, I'm not doing a separate video because everybody and their mama done done a video on YouTube. So that's just that. Moving along to the next shoe. The next shoe I got, um, I think it was a glitch sale. Honestly, I think it was a glitch sale. I was following my little Twitter plug, and he showed this on his page, and I'm like, what? That price can't be right. So I went out to the website, picked up these shoes for $45. I actually got two of them, because since it was $45, why not? These are Boost, as you can tell by the box. Ultra Boost. These are women's. Just show them to you real quick. Got two of these for $45. Y'all know these shoes retail for $180. Got two of these. Y'all got to look for the deals. I will tell you my sneaker plug, but I'd have to kill you. <laughs> I would have to kill you. Y'all, I'm sweating over here. Let's see what else I got. Let me put that back in there so I don't lose that. Let me get that fan action going. What else I got? What else I got? Um, This next shoe. I think I also paid 50 something dollars for it. And the reason why I got this shoe is because I got this hat right here. And I thought it went well together. Let me put this, I got this. Y'all know who this is. Um, Nipsey Hustles. 
This legit from their store in LA. The marathon, the marathon continues. Marathon Clothing Company. Straight up legit. Got it directly from their website. It took a whole month to get it because uh, according to them, they had over 2 million orders when he died. So, or well, actually when he got murdered. My apologies. Anyway, so this next shoe, I got this because they, for one, were on sale. Again, 50 bucks. So if you see this, that says Los Angeles. And these, of course, are Nike Cortez. My apologies. I, I never liked Nike Cortez. But then when I put these on, I was tripping, y'all. I had never felt some shoes that are so comfortable. And you got Cortez 1978, Cortez 78 there. And then on the inside, you got Los Angeles. So I thought this was, you know, a nice little pickup. Just goes well together. If you dig, if you dig, it goes well together. So that's why I got those. And again, there was like 54 bucks or something like that. Sale. Let's see what the retail price was on. It wasn't much because Cortez's don't cost that much. 80, 80 bucks. So out the gate, they weren't expensive. But I'm going to tell you something. Like I said, I've never liked Cortez's. Never, ever. But them bad boys, <laughs> those are comfortable as hell. And those are not the, uh, they got some, they're a different type of material than the, you know, I think the leather ones probably feel weird, but feel, you know, they just never look good to me. But those right there, man, I see why they made a version of house shoes. All right, y'all. This is what you came here for. I'm happy to feature this shoe. Again, a lot of y'all have been talking crazy about this. And this is not a, a, a review, but it's just a my first take on it. All right? This is what you came here for. Yeah. So let's get into it. Giannis Atecoempo. I guess that's how you say it. And then you got a signature on this side of the box. The Nike... These retailed for $120, and this is the Zoom Freak 1. I got size 8. I probably could have gone down, but I, Nike, I usually go up a half size because Nike shoes fit me weird. So this is the Total Orange Midnight Navy, Orange Total, and Marine. And then that's, of course, his logo. I'm not sure how I feel about it. It looks too commercial. It looks too, like, uh, industrial. Like, if y'all ever seen that movie, uh, that cartoon, The Roadrunner, and that Acme building, that's what this A reminds me of. I don't know why, it just looks real, uh, commercial, real industrial. And then you got the interlocking, but anyway, that's his G and the A, interlocking G and A for his initials. And then the G and A is interspersed throughout the box, okay? So, let's open up the box here. Let's set the shoes aside for a moment, brief moment. And then you have the number 34 and the Greek flag on the inside. So this shoe is heavily, heavily influenced by the Greek culture and his family. So that's that. All right, let's pull up the shoe here and then we'll go over it briefly, okay? There's the top of the shoe. Lateral side, look at that. Look at that lateral side, medial side. Show, let's see here, the hill. And again, you see the number 34 in the Greek flag, play on that. And then you see the front of the shoe where it says Freak One. And then you have the reverse swoosh sign really big I like that a lot of people didn't like it but it it, 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 it uh, has multiple multiple purposes here and then we want to look at the two different types of the sole you got the uh, clear sole there and then you got the solid not even sure what that's not a herringbone but you got a solid and what I like about the shoe here well let's just go over it again but first let's start here with the sole um, there's his logo again, and then you see, uh, he, he, in the middle of the soul here, it says, I am my father's legacy. 
this shoe is all about his family and the importance of his family to him. So his father is very important to him, obviously. And also inter, intermixed in this soul is the rose pattern. His father loved roses. So a lot of people overlook that. But that's the rose there and that's a rose there. His father was important. So that's the foundation. His father was the foundation of their family. Okay, so that's a good you know, good start there, and that has a lot of meaning behind it. They look like they put a lot of meaning behind it. And then you have the the zoom patch. There's a couple of them. Uh, there's double zoom patches back here, and then there's nothing up here. But, you know, because he comes down, he does a lot of dunking. It comes down heavy. He probably wants the support here or the cushioning here as opposed to up here. Um, let's keep going around the shoe here. Let's start here. Uh, like I said, there's the freak one here. And then if you look on the inside of the shoe, you'll see his parents' name, names, uh, Charles and Veronica. And then if you go on the heel of the shoe, you'll have his brother's names there on the heel. Okay. You see the four brothers' names there. And that would be Francis, Thanasis, Costas, and Alex. Okay. This shoe... Um, he took a lot of cues from Kobe Bryant's shoe. He's always worn Kobe Bryant's shoe, and Kobe's shoe was his favorite shoe, so he takes a lot, a lot of um, similarities and, and basically a blueprint of, of Kobe's shoe. Uh, one thing that I noticed, Kobe always had like this lateral support here. His didn't always go up as high as this one, but this is a similar one of Kobe's shoes. And the one Kobe shoe that I had that was actually the same color, it was orange, it dug into my my right side of my foot and I didn't like that. I actually sent those shoes back. I put these on, you don't feel this. And I'm so glad because I, I was worried about this piece right here. It doesn't dig into my feet. So anyway, let's continue around the shoe. You have, if you see, the lockdown right here, this represents his brother supporting him and uh, let's see here. Yeah, this, this represents his four brothers supporting and locking him down. Then you have his, again, that logo there. I, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it. I have mixed feelings about it, but maybe it'll grow on me and maybe they'll change it in the future. But again, it's the G and the A. You can't have the A without the G. You can't, you can't, you can't. You can't have Giannis without his family, essentially. Um, and then this right here, you know, there's no sharp point right here. This this part is cut off at an angle because I guess he's just different. This mean this represents that he's just different from most of the other players in the NBA. And then you have that sharp point right here. I don't know. It'll grow on me, I guess. But again, it just looks so commercial and industrial. Um... Then you have the hill counter here that's represented by this big, uh, what do you call this? this? This injected pylon, pylon or whatever you call it here. And it actually provides hill support in addition to the clear one on the uh, medial side. Now, one thing that I could say about these shoes, oh, hold on one second. I forgot to do the inside as well. And then there's just the insole that says, all bros. One thing that I can say about this shoe you put them on and you're going to, first of all, when you hold them in your hand, you can tell there's obvious light. They're light as heck. I don't know if these are the lightest shoes that I've ever put on, but they feel like it. I mean, these are, these to me, um, I think a lot of players will sleep on the shoe, but if they try them, they might become their favorite shoe because of that reason. They're so light compared to say the shoes that we had back in the eighties and the nineties. They were just dense, heavy shoes. These are super light, less leg fatigue. You know, you, you, to me, you, you, that less leg fatigue will allow you to stay in the game longer, so to speak. So I think once people put these on and play in them, they're going to absolutely love them. I really believe that because of how they feel. It's like you're really, um, they have a low profile, so you really feel the floor, if you will, when you put them on. Um, it's like the grip is... The grip is there. I mean, you can, it's like you can grip the floor with your toes in these because they're so 
light. And again, um, I don't know how I feel also about the eyelets. They're stitched as opposed to metal, but there's got to be obviously a reason for that as well. I guess, again, making them less light. These are inexpensive shoes. A lot of people said they should be $80, but you know what? They got to start somewhere. So, And I appreciate that they're less expensive because so many people, so many children can afford them. Um, I suspect when the different colors come out, more people will gravitate towards these shoes. And then when they play in, play in them, they're probably going to end up being their favorite shoe to play in. Because uh, when Paul George's shoes first came out, people said a lot, a lot about these shoes, his shoes. And they end up being like the number one basketball shoe that a lot of people play in because of the lockdown, because of the way they feel on the court. And another thing that's similar to the Paul George's is this actual tongue. If you look on the inside, it's like a, it's, it's just like a putting on a sock. So if you, if you see that there, I don't know if you can really see it if I picked it up right there, but it's an attached tongue. So it's like you're putting on a sock, so to speak. Um, I personally, when I saw them release, I'm like, I'm going to get them one because I always like to get shoes when they first come out, especially of ball players that I love. Um, and he's just, I don't get, I, I'm a Pacers fan, but I also appreciate athletes. And if you just see his progress when he first came to, to the league, to this, from that skinny little tall, tall dude to this muscular Adonis who happens to be a freak at everything he does and turns on the basketball court, you can't help but respect this game. If you're a hooper, you're going to respect this game no matter no matter where you come from. But again, there's a lot of similarities here. I said, like I said, this is a similarity here with the Paul Georges and the little profile, the Kobe, you got your Kobe's uh, profile here as well with the, with these uh, lateral support fins. Um, I also see some of Russell Wilson's if, do I ever have Russell Wilson's shoes? Yeah, I do have them over here, but I don't feel like grabbing them out. But Russell Wilson's line on the back of his shoes, how they came up and, and provide like this big bubble on the back and give you a lot of heel cushioning. That that reminds me of the Russell Wilson. Is it Russell? I'm saying Russell Wilson. Yeah, my bad. Russell Westbrook. Saying that the whole time. Um, the quality, the quality control was all right. I see some spots here and there that I tried to that I tried to, yeah, you see that, that I tried to wipe off. I don't know if it's glue. I don't know what it is, but, you know, Nike sucks with their quality control, but it is what it is. So there you go. First peek, y'all. What y'all think? I know a lot of y'all think they're, this, they're not that, they're not that, um, I don't know, impressive. But I actually think they're actually hot. And if you if, if you are a hoper, honestly, a lot of a lot of if you talk to a doctor about basketball shoes, those high top basketball shoes aren't the shoes that you want to play in. Truth be told, because that high top portion of it digs into that Achilles. How many basketball players get Achilles injuries? Shoes with the lower heel, with the lower not yeah, with the lower low, the low top version of the shoe. It actually doesn't dig into that Achilles, so you're kind of preventing a lot of Achilles in injuries. Um, this is kind of cool. The padding here on the inside is meh, but again, that probably pays into you know the less padding, uh, less material, lighter weight shoe. Um, I think my favorite padding in any shoe is the Dame Five. It's something about the inside of that is just crazy. But anyway, y'all. Here's the first look. First look. What you think? What do you think? Y'all copping or dropping? Um, the next video I'll do probably is a follow-up to the Lark water bottle. See, I crashed and got a big dip. But I end up purchasing a few more because I just I love these bottles. And for all those people that purchased the first bottle, they've actually redesigned the lid. So... That is going to be my next video. But until the next time, y'all. Until the next cop. cop until the next drop. Peace.